Welcome back to Real Gun Adventures. So, I've got myself a couple of targets set up out at 100 metres or thereabouts. They're small and not even visible with the naked eye from where I am now. Now I've got myself a couple of really handy tree stumps and uh, small trees to lean on. So I've got a good position to shoot from. I'm going to get set up. I'm going to be firing 2-2 Pro Hunter slugs, high impact in my Kroll Puncher MPO2 because I've had a lot of success with that with the slugs just recently so that seems like a good idea just to give you some perspective targets are down there it's a long way off isn't it when I um, upload the video I'll try and put an arrow on to give you an idea so uh, scope cam see how we get on and I'll take as many shots as I need so I'll be right back. That's a miss. another miss Ooh. right I'll go and have a look and then I'll explain why I only shot one target and what the mark is for be right back okay well quite pleased with that there is a slight crosswind I guess it's probably about five or six miles an hour the uh, sun is pouring in through the trees at the moment so what I should do uh, is I'll head back get set up in the workshop finish off the video um, but as you see there it's 100 meters um, I think if that was a, um, a rabbit or a squirrel I don't know I don't know if it had the power but it certainly hit the target and certainly did the job for the sake of the experiment anyway let's head back do a roundup. Be right back. Okay, back in the workshop. A couple of things that need clearing up, I think. So the Kroll Puncher, NPO2. Excellent rifle, really pleased with it. It's unregulated, but it's got so much air on board, it doesn't become an issue. Now, shooting at 100 meters with a sub 12 foot pound rifle looked easy, didn't it? I can assure you it wasn't. There's a trick to it, there's some secret sauce. So I did three things deliberately to make that possible. Now the first one was the target itself it was actually quite big. Um, you don't get that perspective from the filming, but behind it was a stick and on that stick was a two inch target. Now you can see the target, you can see the lollipop, you can see the difference in size. Um, so that is a decent size head to shoot at. I did have two, I had a smaller one as well. Now, believe it or not, in the time it took me to walk 100 metres back to my shooting position, film the intro, and then look, it was gone, without a trace. Now, I thought that had fallen over. When I checked later, it's gone. It's just disappeared. So I've got this vision in my mind of a squirrel up a tree somewhere, licking my lollipop. But anyway, never mind. Now, the marker was there as a rangefinder, and it was to allow me to zero the rifle. So we've got a large and standard target, also my homemade scope gun, which flips on the back. The power unit of that is a mobile phone, and that mobile phone has got a very good camera or cameras. So I've got a 16 times zoom scope plus at least a 10 times zoom magnification from the camera. That's why the reticle looks a bit thick in some of these scope gun shots because I've zoomed up even further. So looking through the scope, uh, the view is different, it looks further away. With the camera attached and zoomed, I've got a much better picture. Now shooting with the scope cams are another thing altogether, but I've kind of got that off now. More importantly, <coughs> there's a thing, the secret source if you like, it's not a secret, it just doesn't get talked about that often. Minute of angle, MOA. So to make one of these accurate, and to be able to zero it at 100 meters plus, you need to make an adjustment to it. You need to raise the back slightly, give it a cant. 
And what that does is it changes your trajectory and it makes your pellet fly at a different um, rate, a different curve and stay in the air for longer and obviously land in a different place as well. Now, there's all kinds of apps and formulas and things you can, you can use and apply to work all that out. There's all kinds of gadgets and gizmos you can buy. Now, these scope rings, which didn't come with the scope, they came with a rifle I bought actually, and I bought the rifle for the scope and the silencer. The rifle was just attached to them. Turned out, they're um, no limit scope rings made by FX, for the FX air guns, and they actually have an adjustment up and down. So you can achieve that MOA setting from the scope rings. If that wasn't the case, it's actually possible to shim the scope with what they call minute of angle shims. Now you can buy those, you can buy inserts, Hawk do an insert for their, I think for their sport and match. So you buy the insert, you fit it, and it gives you that extra bit of cant. Or you can take a soda can, which is just the right thickness, and you can cut your shims from that, and five shims will generally get you where you need to be. I'll probably make a video on that at another time. But that is the secret, it's the MOA, and that changes where the pallet takes off from and eventually where it lands and gives you that extra range. So you wouldn't be able to do this without that adjustment. And that's because the scope just doesn't have the range of adjustment to, to get over that. Anyway, I'm just gonna show you something and then I'll be right back. So, bit of slow-mo. Now, the important thing to take away from this is that shooting at 100 meters sub 12 foot pound is possible, um, more than possible, you can do it. The uh, MOA shims, rings, adapters, uh, the rings were about 50 to 60 pound. Um, the Hawk adapter, I think, is 10 or 11 pound. You can make the shims for nothing, um, which is the cheapest way. You don't need to apply all kinds of mathematical formulas. I'm not going to go into any of that technical jargon. I'm going to make a separate video and I'll explain it in easy terms. Um, I'll explain how to zero, um, how to do the thing for nothing. So if you want to do some long distance shooting with your sub 12 foot pound air rifle, you can. Please bear in mind that over that distance, most of the energy is depleted. You're not going to be able to go hunting at 100 meters with a sub 12 foot pound rifle but you can shoot it, you can hit stuff, you can knock tins over. And really, that's half the fun, isn't it? Now, there's a few things coming up, lots more outside filming, a bit less of me sat in the workshop, which should please a lot of people. So, please like and subscribe. It's a big thank you to all those who have. I really appreciate it. This time out, I'm going to say thank you to Pro Hunter Slugs for these 17.8 grain slugs, which I was able to use today. Um, that's quite a heavy pellet, shall we say. Firing at 100 meters, it's pretty impressive. It did take a bit of working out, but we got there in the end. Anyway, I'll be back soon. Um, and when I am, I have something new to show you. Hopefully something a bit more interesting, and I will make that how-to video. So, back again soon. Bye for now.